Hey everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. I'm Matt McCarthy at the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street in New York City and I have the pleasure of being here with head coach of Team USA's men's 15s program, John Mitchell. John, you're now the coach of Team USA. Did you ever foresee this? I always had a, um, a question mark um, after Kevin coached the All Blacks that would I go and coach a ever go and coach a tier two side, I think my first question, answer to that would be no, I'll, I'll, I'll just accept that I had a, you know, a, you know, an experience with the All Blacks that not too many people ever get in their life. Then I thought, well, what are the, what are the tier two nations in the world that, that we're, world rugby need to, need to grow? And immediately, you know, America, United States uh, springs springs to mind. And you don't want to be in winters in Moscow. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, and I did seek other positions. Um, when the opportunity arose, I thought, well, actually, it's a good fit. And this is a, a situation where there's huge potential with limited resources. Sure. And so it then requires a really strategic thinking of going, oh, okay, how can we pull these resources to maximize the, the, the talent pool and how can we create a graded competitive talent pool that allows us to become the best we possibly can be. It's not about being the best in the world, right. but it's actually about authentically being competitive against, against tier one. And maybe the next quad and the quad after that, um, American rugby becomes, becomes a force. So. You walked in, basically, and were given the keys to a, a car that had some new parts on it. So you had the ARCs, the America's Rugby Championship, which was new. You had pro rugby kicking off. So at least you had some stuff that you could, because this is a, it's an enormous country that didn't have any <laughs> professional rugby, and we had very little setups for the Eagles mm. to begin with. So there is no way you could just go from state to state to state, especially on USA Rugby's budget, mm. to scout, right? So at least now you... You're walking into the ARCs, but you don't really know the players. What was that like? Well, firstly, um, my appointment was late, or the appointment of the head coach was late, so that wasn't ideal strategically for the for the year of two, you know, for the start of this year. Um, and then I had to arrive late as well because I lost my mum. Sorry to hear that. But yeah, it's, uh, and so my head was elsewhere in terms of dealing with family. Then I arrived in with a roster that was selected by high performance. Wait a minute. What about the criticisms? Because there, there are criticisms that are, that are, are coming uh, out that say you're handing out too many caps. So you didn't really hand out those caps. No, ultimately the roster was selected before my time. Um, and I understand why the roster was selected because it was a development roster. But, you know, ARC was inaugural. Um, uh, a couple of things that that I challenged was, you know, if, if Argentina aren't going to provide caps, why should everyone else provi uh, right. provide caps in what was essentially, I thought, a, like a development tournament. It's, it's not healthy to hand out a whole lot of caps. The Eagles have fallen into the trap in the past of probably almost creating an invitational type um, uh, mindset, and that's something that the new team identity is uh, is is... Is, ch is wanting to change that perception and we want to make sure that our fans understand that our traits are, are aligned to to being American. I think going forward you're going to see a lot more consistency and continuity in, in, in selection. Um, Regulation 9 is still a, is a yeah. challenge for us. Yeah. Um, big clubs just don't, aren't prepared to release right. uh, players and some clubs like Toulon and that, you know, they don't abide by the rules. They've got the power of money. But um, we'll get around Reg 9, and, and I think we're starting to create a culture and a climate where, where the players that haven't been available to, to date um, uh, are looking forward to coming in. What have you found to be the most surprising thing about your experiences with USA Rugby so far? Nothing's really been surprising. It's actually been more about actually trying to understand the geography of the rugby, um, the, the different groups that are that we that basically have that have to combine to become one. You've got domestic players, overseas players, contracted players. You've got contracted sevens players, collegiate players, and then you've got to look at that. And then go, well, how can you create uh, a deeper uh, talent pool sure. and make it more competitive? Yeah. Um, we've got positional challenges. We don't have a massive budget. Right. We don't have a massive player pool. The pro rugby competition is a you know, you've got to take your head off for putting your necks out there and getting a competition started. Yeah. What the product looks like now 
is not, is not so much my concern is, is what, what it'll look like in two years time or yeah. four years time now the product in my mind at the moment is too slow yeah. and it's not it doesn't show the intensity that's required for for test rugby so we've got to find ways where we can quicken up the game how do we do that um, they'll have to look at coaching structures within within pro rugby they'll have to look at um, strength and conditioning structures with the, within those teams because it's not a quick fix. To kind coaches, of give them a template? Yeah, it's kind of like making sure that the, the athlete's basically following one program, basically. Fitness levels and, and stuff And like then, that. so yeah. then you, then between programs, um, there's not a, there's not a big change. You're not confusing the athlete as well. Right. Um, and you're working towards, you know. Uh, you mean uh, the same team. standard of fitness level when they're coming out of a pro exactly. rugby camp going into an eagle camp? Yeah, it's just a matter of working together. It's, it's a very simple solution. A lot of it's, a lot of it's ego. Yeah, like a lot of it's at the end of the day, it's 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 people um, just get, you know, putting the ego aside and saying what's what's the best way to go about this with the with the resources that we have. On that note, Coach, I want to thank you for your time. You've been you. more than patient with us. I'm Matt McCarthy from the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, in New York City, for Rugby Wrap Up, signing off. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Benny.